Hi, good evening, everybody. This is your tutor, Sir Hassan Dosani, and a big welcome to all of you on day number two of our Game Changer webinar series for SBL December 2021 attempt. And uh, I would like to continue from where we left yesterday. We were not able to complete our target for yesterday. So those of you who have joined today for the first time, we are actually doing a full SBL question this time. And the question which we have selected is SBL specimen paper number three. It is called Nebi. And these are the various topics. And uh, we will solve this question on this actual CBE platform. So let me see whether my CBE platform is available. Yeah, it's there. Let me close here. Yeah. Please, can I have a yes if you can see my screen on my CBE platform? Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. Very good. So now, So we were actually, remind me, I think we were at question number one, right? And uh, question number one was, uh, prepare a report which assesses and appraises the two options from a strategic perspective. The report should allow the board of Nehebi to compare and contrast the two options. Can anybody remind me the options? What are the two options which were in front of them? Option number one. Just type very shortly. Hotel, very good. So option one is hotel, diversify into hotel. And option two is continue with their existing business model. All right. So people who have joined now for the benefit of those people who were not there yesterday, this company has two options for future growth and direction. One is that they continue with their existing business model. They already have eight restaurants in the southern part of the country and they want to open a ninth restaurant in the same city. And the other option is that they diversify and open a hotel in the northern part of the country. It is a family owned business. So the dad, the dad who is the chairman and CEO, he is in favor of restaurant business, expanding the current business, whereas the three sons are in favor of the hotel business and diversification. Very good. So now we have been asked, and what is our role? I think we were management consultant, right? External people. So we have been asked to prepare a report which you know, compares the two options. So obviously we will look at the pros and the cons of both options. There must be some good points and some bad points in option A and similarly good points and bad points of option B. So all we need to do is identify the good and the bad points for both the options and lay them out in a presentable manner. And then we will also need to look at the financials. Obviously, uh, we, 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 uh, we look at, oh, yeah, we look at both financials and non-financials, right? Very good. So. We were, we already read, we already read, uh, I think the, uh, let me increase the screen. Yeah. 
So we already read the introduction, yeah? Do you remember? Okay, and uh, we copy pasted some stuff. Then we read the, we just quickly saw this article about some prestigious awards, all good stories about their restaurant business. Then we read the transcript of the three, four directors, what they want to say, and we have already read that. And then exhibit four was basically a comparison of two investment plans. It is a financial exhibit. Wait. Uh, right, so we will look at that today the comparison and we have to read exhibit five so this is where we have to read right on the other hand i'm just trying to warm up you guys uh we also made a list of requirements somewhere do you remember list of requirements so i would like to just recall the list of requirements right and uh, the, oh, this was first question prepare a report okay and then there was question number two was uh this one question number two is uh, Question 2A is explanation of the appropriateness to NABI company of diversifying risk. Okay, diversifying risk. And then question number 2B was consideration of the key factors which will influence the financing structure. Okay. And question number 3A was to recommend with justification the measures which will be important for tracking all major project variables project variables 3b was uh, explanation of the implications both for the board nebby blah 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 of the governance changes <coughs> question 3c was Analyze the current culture and then 4A and 4B was about the current marketing account management accounting information. Right. So let's read exhibit five and then we will be ready to start our drafting. Okay, guys. Just read these first two paragraphs. So what is this? It is an industry article. Hospitality industry. So do you guys think how, how is this relevant to us? Any idea the industry in which we are operating? It's uh, it's an article on the industry. So I think it's uh, it's important to us, right? Because we are operating in the hospitality or hotel industry. So this article is telling us information about the industry in which we are operating, like customers, suppliers, competition, economy, how it's affecting my industry. So I think this will be an important thing. Now it will be internal mostly or external? External, right? Very good. So I would like to pick up two, three points from this mostly external points. All right, let's start. Please read the first two paragraphs.
I'm done. It's all just fancy stories here and there. We don't have this much time to cover these details in our answers under exam condition. So just one major punchline you identify and we can move on. Spotlight on the future. This would be an interesting thing. Let's read these three paragraphs. Uh, Bhava is not able to copy paste in the word response, so you need to refresh, you know, refresh uh, the uh, the browser, and hopefully it will work. Okay, done. When you are finished reading, please type done. All right, so time to copy paste. Industry commentators expect another excellent year for hospitality industry anticipating rising hotel occupancy rates. So it's overall good news, right? So I'll just copy this and where is that document here? uh external factors option one option two option one was restaurant right yeah in the last 12 months revenue per available room a performance metric used in hotel industry has increased from is this good news or bad news that revenue available per room has increased that's good or bad very good so i can again you know use this statistic wherever wherever listen very carefully wherever any statistics is given i love to use statistics in my answer can anybody tell me why it is nice to use statistics in your answer please do not use q a box whatever question you have type in the chat box why yeah extra mark it will help get you extra mark but why why statistics board loves it huh it proves your point okay 
simply because yeah it, you know when you give statistics you sound more credible more dependable more authentic and also being finance people being finance people we should give statistics it is our numbers is our job right got it so wherever you see any statistics in the scenario try and use it in your answer i'm not saying 100% of the time but as much as you can so i just copied it over the same period the average daily rate has been remain consistent okay i'll just copy paste here as a continuation uh just to show that i'm using some statistics restaurants play a bigger role in than ever in hotels and the restaurant is unlikely very good is this good news for me yeah because i am an expert in restaurants right so now restaurants are playing a bigger role in hotel okay i think there's a lot of a lot of stupid stuff just read this paragraph this i think this looks important When you are when you are done with this paragraph, let me know, and I will move to the next paragraph. Northern regeneration program. Okay, so please read these two paragraphs now. Ten more seconds. Whoops! What happened? Okay. So, what is this Northern Regeneration Program? It is saying that the revenue in the northern part of Sealand is likely to increase more faster. Why? Because they you know in the north there is a major sporting event. which is going to happen there so uh the next few years there will be a lot of people traveling to that northern part of the country this is good news for if i have a hotel amazing yeah so option 1 external factors yeah here and then facilitate economic growth government grants so have we i think we've covered government grant before again some statistics when i see statistics i just use them uh to support my answer 
What about this one? There is fierce competition where? Where? Where is this fierce competition in the capital city? It says that there are not enough great sites available and there is fierce capital, sorry, cap competition to acquire the, so it makes sense for a business to consider investment in North. So South is already very saturated. <laughs> this is i can take this point as a negative point for the second option <coughs> that you know um, if you want to open up another restaurant in the same city um, a lot of this fierce competition going on so it doesn't make lots of sense to open in a place where there's already a lot of competition and we have eight restaurants already. Why? Right. Option one is hotel industry. Correct. Right. So let me just go through come some quick stuff. Otherwise, you know, I will just skip stupid things. I just need to see whether something is important. All right, khalas. Done. So now let's focus on the points we have gathered so far. Ready, guys? Now, before I start my drafting, listen very carefully. Before I start my drafting, so right now, up till now, what we have done, we have gathered some points, we have copy pasted some points from the exhibits, right? Now the next step is drafting and, you know, preparing your answer so that you can score good marks. Before you start your drafting, you have to read the requirement very carefully again so that we do not get off track. So what's the requirement? Let's read this first. I will read the background, then the requirement, then the, I will read the entire requirement carefully now, just before I'm starting my drafting so that I don't miss out anything. So let's read the requirement carefully. Nebi company is now considering whether to continue with the current business model, blah, 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 or to diversify the portfolio and enter the hotel industry, blah, 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 blah. The board of Nebi has requested an independent report on the two mutually exclusive investment options they are considering. What is the meaning of two mutually exclusive investment option. What does it mean? Mutually exclusive investment option. Ah, very good guys. Very good. I'm impressed. Means either this or this. I cannot have both girlfriends. I need to choose. If I choose her, goes if i choose her she goes so these are the two mutually now there are, okay what's the format here report which assesses and appraises two options from a strategic perspective the report blah 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 note a recommendation is not required okay 20 marks and professional skills marks are available for demonstrating evaluation in assessing and appraising the information the board need to use to form the basis of final decision how can we score evaluation we have to make sure that for the both the options we, we should cover pros and cons we should not give a biased picture we should not give a one-sided picture okay okay so i think we are good 
the format. So this is the question. Let me, now I am about to start my drafting. You guys can watch me for a few minutes. So I'm now starting with a report format. How do you make a report? R E P O R T. Okay. To from subject date to enter and then introduction. Can you do that for me? Can you type quickly these things on your CV platform? Once you are done, it's all right, Tajwar. We will look into it later. I, this all this case has got a lot of garbage. Well, if you cannot get into the CB platform, then just watch me and then try later. That's very bad. I had requested everybody that in the morning you guys should enter your CB platform and catch up, right? Once you are done, please type done. Now, select report. Go to paragraph, increase the size to heading two. And then underline, you can underline through control U or use an icon and center. Maybe increase the size to heading one like this. Can you do that? The report is big, big, right in the center. Okay, now, who is the report to be addressed to? It, you will need to look at the requirement. Where is the requirement? This, the board of NABI what has requested. So the, request, the report, the addressee will be Either you can write the board of NABI or you can write board of directors. What do you think is right? Please do it downside. Board of directors. From. From was somewhere in the first exhibit. I am an independent self-employed management consultant. So I just write management consultant. Subject. Are you guys doing along with me? Are you typing? Subject, I want very short. So again, I will look at the requirements and I will just choose a very short two words, three words, subject tagline. How about two options or two strategic options or future strategic options? What do you think? Yes, I am writing everything in bold. The, the two from is in bold and then the rest will be unbold, right? Future direction. Where Did you see the word future direction in the requirement? Please uh, stick to the words used in the requirements. Evaluation of two options. Why do you need to write evaluation of? Forget evaluation. So let's, okay. Don't write evaluation or assessment, just the main word. Okay, I would say future options, thing like a CFO, future options or strategic options or maybe future strategic options. Khalas, date, what is the date of your paper? Okay, got it? All this is caps and bold deliberately so that the examiner can see that the format is well presented. Even I can, you know, uh, increase the font size from by 
a little bit. Okay. Now introduction, that should not be bold, huh? that should be normal fonts. Now where do I get the introduction? We will copy paste from the requirement. We will say this, nope, this report. And then we will um, go to the requirement and we will copy assesses and appraises the two options from a strategic perspective, control C. I will just copy it and go to the word and I will paste it. This report assesses and appraises the two options from strategic perspective. What are the two options? I think we had already mentioned here. Option one. I don't like this. The sons have suggested because we just copy pasted at that time, right? So now we need to make it like a proper report. We will say that option one is, I delete the sons have suggested, Navy should pursue a strategy of product diversification and enter hotel industry. Halas. Or you can, uh, maybe you can remove it or you want to keep it. They've identified a new You can keep it, but instead of they, they have identified a new business opportunity done. What is option two? I will just, you know, let me copy paste the format. Option two is, I think we have uh, mentioned somewhere down there, option two. I will just cut it and uh, I will paste it here. Option two. However, Graham believes that the business should continue. So I need to remove all this scrap. We will say option two is that Nabi should continue with its current business model of converting da 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 and open ninth. Uh -oh, ninth restaurant in Caputo. Halas, option one, option two. Please now I will wait for you guys. You need to catch up now. So you see the report, the format, the introduction, the two options have been defined. This is option one or and this is option two. Or maybe you can switch as well if you want. Option one can be the these restaurants. Option two doesn't really matter. Are you guys done up till here? Okay, I will give you guys one minute to just complete this. I want you to do it on your own so that you get the feel of it. One minute for you guys to catch up up till here. Those of you who have not copy pasted, you will struggle because you missed yesterday's class, but it looks really nice to me up till now. done okay so those of you who are not you know up to the mark you can watch and then tomorrow morning you can try on your own right because we are struggling with time we cannot wait i cannot wait so much i hope you understand right so now these are the two options now what do we do let's analyze option one option one i will give a heading option one which is hotel oh bowl center 
increase the font size so that the examiner can clearly see. Now let's talk about option one. External factors, the feel of the property. So now we will look at all the points, but obviously we cannot pick up all the points. I just need one or two points per heading and I will move on because you know it's a time thing as well under exam conditions. So what are the main thing is the economy is doing good, the government is supporting, uh, there are grants, um, it is a diversifying, um, more tourists are expected in the northern part, right? Very good. So let's start. Industry commentators uh, expect another excellent year for hospitality industry, anticipating rise in hotel occupancy as well as increasing number of restaurants meals served in the type of restaurants. Okay, now is this good or bad? When they ex expect another excellent year, uh, rising uh, hotel occupancy, is that good? rising hotel occupancy means what why is it good explain to me like i'm a five-year-old child it's more revenues right very good uh yeah you can type in increased revenue more revenue so we will say that this Plus. In the last 12 months, revenue per available room has increased from this to this. Now, revenue, average revenue, this shows that re revenue potential is increasing over the years or has has a, an upward trend over the years which is favorable for hotel industry okay what else I like this sentence. I believe we should try and take first mover advantage available to us. What is a first mover advantage? Any idea? First movers advantage. Capturing market share. Yeah, right now grabbing opportunity. Very good. But, but I believe we should try. No, we need to, we need to just change this uh as an we are my role is external right uh this option will enable nabi to take first mover advantage and grab growth opportunities in northern part of sealand alas oh this is a very important point we should also be taking advantage of the grants that are available for businesses choosing to invest We should be taking Nebi 
can also benefit from the grounds that are available for businesses choosing to invest in north of sealand how will grant benefit us if we get government grants how does that help us why is it good why is it not bad government grants is it good helps saving on our costs helps to reduce our cost i don't like the word cost maybe will help reduce our investment because right now we are starting yeah so we, it will reduce the funding requirements or it will help reduce our initial investment cost sounds very routine like day to day operations right so government is giving grants to come for people to come up and set up businesses so i think investment is a better word what do you think nebi cash can also benefit from the grants that are available uh, this would enable nebi to reduce its funding or initial initial investment requirements slash cash flows what do you think just one liner is required from you to justify why you are giving this point that's the whole trick you understand that one sentence from the scenario and one sentence from your side justifying or telling about the impact or how it's going to affect us good or bad and that's the trick uh prince you are right that surplus funds can be used in other areas but don't don't expand your answers unnecessarily because you will struggle with time got it i can definitely i can add more three four more lines i i am good in adding you know fancy lines i can but don't do it because you are struggling with time management just basic point and move on for me time management is more important remember like yesterday's lecture time is more important what about this last point i am removing everything what about this point the growth rate is likely to increase faster in the north of sealand where a regeneration program is underway ba 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 overseas visitors will rise by 600000 this year the highest in the last 5 years this is a uh, a great opportunity to uh, or this will lead to substantial or faster growth business growth Okay. as compared to south part of the country the point here is that the northern part is going to grow more faster enough so now my big question Aisha you are absolutely right Aisha is saying for 24 marks question aren't we writing so much under this external only like we have other headings as well absolutely correct okay but i am not writing that much what i am just doing is adding one sentence to copy paste it stuff maybe you, you know you can delete you can just write top 3 points for me time management is more important but right now because i'm showing you how to do it 
you, you can understand and then we can always in the next questions try to restrict our number of points varda i will cover financials wait baba definitely we haven't looked at the financials as yet so you understand i'm going very slow because this is the first time you are drafting it understand the technique one line from the case and one line from your mind explaining how that point is relevant is it necessary to have subheadings uh i am not giving subheadings i just said external factors so some kind of subheading would definitely you know make the report look nicer a report normally has proper headings right so that the reader can see so high level heading like option 1 external factors would definitely make your report nice and easy for the readers revenue growth under financials yes i am coming under i haven't started financials i am right now just talking about non financials financials there is a proper exhibit which we have not looked into you see this exhibit that's financial so wait yes sha why are you copy pasting so much things how about subheadings like geographical government grants that would be nice if you can give more subheadings like government grants growth potential but just be careful about time okay but that would be nice it's okay right let's move on internal factors and internal factors i would definitely like to talk about human resource financial resource that those are two main things right so human resource do they have experience in hotel business do they have direct experience in hotel business no just they are the best in restaurants no doubt they are amazing bunch of people in restaurant business nobody can beat them but they feel uh, but they they have confidence they feel that their competencies will help them in hotel business and also restaurants are now becoming a uh, integral part of hotel business those if you look at this sentence i know that my experience with restaurants can be transferred to hotel we know that restaurants play a bigger role so we are playing by our core strengths let's use these two lines uh, about human resource we will say that uh, nabi does not have any experience of hotel business however um restaurants however i will just copy restaurants are playing a bigger role than ever in hotels so nabi i'm just changing the tone because i'm an external consultant so nabi can play to uh, <coughs> where is it yeah so nabi can play to their core strengths they can utilize their experience with restaurants in hotel venture khalas 
this this paragraph talks about hr that nebi does not have any experience of hotel business what about finance now these are points from finance my initial concern was not being able to finance the hotel without external investment and a potential dilution my concern is the hotel is characterized with high gearing Hmm. Can we draft something about finance? A little bit. Uh, uh, hotel would require substantial investment. Can anybody tell me the amount of investment required? Because as I said, I love to quote numbers. The amount is given. We have not read. that exhibit but if i can show you the financial exhibit where is it yeah here so the cash flows required is hotel is 21 million it's also mentioned initial investment 5 million versus 21 million okay so i would like to use the hotel or uh, would require substantial investment of dollar 21 million this if this is arranged through a uh, loan it will adversely affect the gearing of nebi and if this amount is arranged through through what through venture capitalist then it will dilute the existing ownership of the company khalas enough i'm just deleting all the other stuff and i am putting the human resource first and financial point as second okay now any questions on internal factors you see how i simplified stuff i removed all the points i just focus on two top points two top points and just explain in very simple language so that a 5 year old child can understand one paragraph on the experience side and one paragraph on the financial side yes ikra absolutely but no need to go into so much complication in your answer i'm trying to simplify and shorten the answer and you are trying to increase and going into more detail in the answer baba you just have limited time in under exam situation so very very basic do you understand the approach the two points of internal factors yes or no i want everybody to say this is the approach you need to take very good very good so now once once you will do this drafting on your own you will feel more confident right so look at the option 1 option 1 there are external factors da 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 so many options we gave the points which i don't like giving so many points but fine they were there i just added one sentences to them and very brief internal factors and the third heading would be financial right financials uh so we will we haven't look at that exhibit so now let's move to option 2 let's do a similar drafting for option 2 uh
option two is restaurant in Caputo. Now, how are uh, the external factors for Caputo? External, where, why can't I hear anything all? Yes, okay. Are you guys able to hear me? Because one student is saying that, uh, no, you're not able to hear me. Can you hear me? Very good. Okay, okay. Good, good. Thanks, thanks. Now, restaurant in Caputo. How many restaurants we already have in Caputo? Eight restaurants. And it is saying that in the capital, there are not enough sites available and there is fierce competition to acquire. So it makes sense for a business to consider investment in north of Sealand. I will just edit this a bit and not worry about, you know, other things. What are the other points? What about this sentence? Let me start with this sentence, okay? I will say this is a, we should continue to build on our strengths by expanding restaurant portfolio in Cap, in Caputo. This was by the, the dad, right? But we cannot say we. Option, this option or restaurant option will help Nabi continue to build on its strengths and core competencies by expanding its restaurant portfolio in Caputo. However, capital city has fierce competition. I'm just picking up from here. Has fierce competition. And so it makes sense for a business to consider investment. I'll just take it here. Class, enough. I'm done with external factors. Internal factors. Human resource and financial resource. Do we know anything about human resource? Yeah, this paragraph, we have been successful in attracting and commanding. So I'll just copy, cut it and paste it here as a first line. We will say that Nabi has been successful in attracting, commanding intense loyalty from its restaurant staff. Just removing. Uh, Nabi's staff turnover is relatively low in an industry known for high staff turnover. Furthermore, Nabi has rich experience of 35 years of restaurant business and has won, won what? Several awards and is a very strong brand in Caputo. What about financials? How much is required in the financials? I remember seeing some financials. Uh, it was comparison, I think it was 5 million. Oh, the investment required for this option is dollar 5 million, which is substantially lower than the investment required for hotel option. 
hence this goes in favor of then this point goes in favor of this option okay very simple points let me look at some comments what are the comments it cannot to an apple up to an apple to apple mpv comparison wait baba kevin wait wait so are we done with external factors internal factors like non financials we are done now only thing left is financials all right for that we will have to look at the exhibits does it look good report two from subject date introduction option 1 option 2 option 1 hotel in north zealand external factors 5 6 points internal factors 2 points financials is pending option 2 external factors couple of points internal factors couple of points financials is pending where is financials exhibit 4 okay let me remove it from here okay financials financials okay let me remove this from here what is the this thing our current investment criteria are for projects to deliver a positive npv at the cost of capital chosen and to achieve a payback within 5 years interesting that's the only so are you guys ready to look at the financials now but please you have to look at the financials like a cfa don't look like at it like a student or an accountant you should look like you are reviewing and thinking and reviewing okay so first let me give you some hints okay so whenever you see a financial projection whenever you see a financial projection you look at five things as a cfo i look at five things i have a mental checklist you understand what a checklist is yeah so you should look at five things number one projection should be based on discounted cash flow so all long term investments are supposed to be analyzed using the discounted cash flow method using a sensible discount rate then i would like to calculate the simple payback then we will look at review the assumptions for any apparent stupidity why do we need to review the assumptions can anybody kobu ask me this questions towards the end huh? i would like to answer this question kobu but not now why do we need to review the assumptions for well you know for sense sense check yeah yeah i understand mahita it is reasonable or not but why do we need to check whether the assumptions are reasonable or not the reliability of the data very good so a financial projection is a futuristic thing right it is that is why it is called projections so those numbers are showing future forecasted or expected numbers nobody knows the future so all those fancy numbers are calculated based on certain assumptions correct what will happen if one of the assumption goes wrong the numbers will change yes or no very good hera if one of the assumption goes wrong the number will change and if the number will change the npv will change and if the npv changes the entire decision can go wrong 
So actually the numbers are dependent on the quality of the assumptions. The, the, the more solid your assumptions, the more reliable you can. So the projections are dependent on assumptions. So it's very, as a CFO, I look at the assumptions very carefully because a wrong assumption can lead to a wrong decision. Got it? Very good, very good. So let's go one by one. So item number one. The, it should be based on discounted cash flow. So let me open, uh, let me close this and open this. Okay, let me, uh, are you guys able to see it? Are you guys able to read it? So is it based on discounted cash flow? Let me, oh, I see a, I see a word called um, discount factor, you see? And if I go down, investment restaurant business year zero year one year two net present value is 0 0.651 so initial investment is minus five and then inflow year one is minus 0 0.5 plus these are all inflows their discount factor and the present value and hence the present value is 0.651 million right for hotel it is the initial investment cash flows discount factor present value so is it based on discounted cash flow yes Halas. then there is no other point to talk about the second thing we look at is we try and calculate the payback so can we calculate the payback? Because I, I think the director mentioned that for them, the criteria is five years. So what is the payback? So, you know, I'm always confused. Payback should be based on before discount or after discount. Any idea? What do you do normally? What do you guys do? Is it based on before discounting or after discounting? Majority is saying before discounting. Simple payback is before discounting or after. Guys, don't confuse me. I know there are two methods. Simple, which one is faster and simpler? I don't know. So let's look at, so can anybody let me know the discount of uh, the payback period of hotel business. So the outflow is 21 million and inflow is, can anybody calculate for me? You know how to calculate between four and five. It is less than 4.8. Yes, Shilpa, absolutely right. Shilpa says it's 4.8 years. So you can calculate it at your home uh, later on, but 4.8 is 4.8 is the right answer. And can you calculate for me the payback of uh, restaurant business, please? Oops, what happened? Restaurant business payback is Wow, Shilpa, 5.25. Shilpa, can you share how you are calculating? Or you just read examiner's answer? Oh, you Shilpa, you did it. I'm very impressed. Many people are asking how you calculated it. How did you get 4.8? Uh, 
uh, at cash flow until it makes sum of initial investment of 5 million. Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay, I'm going to do something fancy here. I copied everything. I went to spreadsheet. I opened a new spreadsheet and I paste. And I paste why it's not i'm trying to copy the entire data copy and on a simple spreadsheet i want to paste uh -huh. i don't know uh You guys can calculate, right? I don't want to stop here. And uh, so, for example, you add this plus this plus this plus this, how much it comes, and then year one plus year two next to scissors. I did that. I actually, uh, you know, copy pasted using the options next to the scissor oh okay i get i understand uh copy and i go to where is that excel sheet spreadsheet and paste No, it's not working because it's a strange thing. Anyways, uh, do you guys want me to calculate it right now or you can figure it out? It's not rocket science. You just keep on adding the cash flows till you reach 5 million. And then you will calculate how many years and how many months, okay? I do expect you guys to know this technique. So Aisha Maimon has mentioned uh, something. Let me show you what Aisha has mentioned. Uh, uh, SNIP, SNP tool, open, not now. Where is SNP tool? Come on. Snipping new. And this is the calculation, guys. I can show you on a Word document. And let me paste it. This is what Aisha has shown. Aisha has calculated. Thank you, Aisha. She has calculated for the restaurant business. She added all the cash flows minus five, minus point five, plus point five, plus one, plus. 1.5 plus 2. And why do you divide by 2, Aisha? Anyways, guys, uh, you it's very simple. I know how it's calculated, but I don't have the tools to, you know, calculate here right now. Okay, let's move on. So can we write one sentence on... where is the word processor on the payback we will say option one payback the what's happening okay the payback period of hotel option is how much is four point eight years which is within the criteria specified by the finance was it finance john nebby right by the finance director and for option two, 
I would say the payback period of restaurant essay. option is 5.25 years, which is slightly above the criteria of five years specified by the finance director. Okay, got it? Now, can anybody let me know the NPV of both options? What is the NPV? Which one is better? NPV of our restaurant is 0 0.65 million and NPV of hotel is 2.9 million. Wow. I would like to write that uh, in my report because financials, it is mostly about NPV, right? Okay. So we will, this is the financials. So I would start with NPV. That's important. And then the NPV of this option is dollar 2.9 million is dollar 2.9 million at which is substantially higher than the NPV of restaurant business, which was dollar 0 0.65 million, correct? Second point is that the payback period of hotel option is 4.8 million. Okay, so I will just copy paste this NPV line there so that I can, you know, mention this. The NPV of this option is 0 0.65 million, which is substantially lower than the NPV of hotel business, which is 2.9 million. Done. Basic stuff is there. <coughs> now, what else? So we looked at the projections, discounted cash flow we've mentioned. So discount rate, uh, simple payback, review the assumptions, review the assumptions. So what are the assumptions? Ah, background on investment, expansion of our existing restaurant business, ba 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 open a hotel in the north of Sealand, qualifying for government grants towards renovation cost. Very good. Initial investment, the dollar five million, the basis for determining the initial investment outlay is the actual cost incurred in the renovation of our latest restaurant added to our current portfolio 15 months ago, 21 million. The basis of determining the initial investment is information sourced from industry experts who have recent involvement. Do you see any problem in these in, in these um, assumptions, especially this one? So what is the basis of 5 million? Why not 6 million? Why not 4 million? This 5 million is the cost of opening a new restaurant based on our last restaurant, which was opened. 18 months ago or 15 months ago, what's wrong with this? Maybe outdated. Yes. What's wrong with this? Kevin, you're saying it's wrong assumption, but that's not enough for the examiner. What's wrong with it? Inflation. Okay. That's a poor word. Maybe there's a, maybe there is no inflation in that economy. How do you know that? It's outdated is a better word. Yes, good, Elvin. 
Kevin, don't be so philosophical. <laughs> that I'm, I mean, inflation is right. I'm not saying, but a better word is this. This is outdated numbers. We need to look at the latest cost, right? I'm sure it's gone up, but inflation, we don't know. It's just inflation. There might be some new stuff, new may, new ways of construction, maybe. Okay, I'm just, you know. So can we draft it somewhere? Where is it? What processor? Financials. This is option two. I will go. Uh, the cost of dollar five million is based on the last restaurant, or can we say eight restaurant built by Nebi 15 months ago? This cost needs to be revalidated as costs may have gone up instead of saying inflation as costs may have gone up or outdated in our or maybe outdated halas enough now cfos what else can you see proposed project commencement the building has been identified blah 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 former bank forget project duration three months once final agreement is negotiated nine months once final okay duration is fine both are within one year right okay this one is very important cash flow the net cash flows are based on the figures achieved for the latest restaurant added to the current portfolio 15 months ago so the you know this cash flows of the restaurants the inflows are based on our latest restaurant 15 months ago so again the uh, these numbers may not be up to date they might be outdated so we need to revisit or revalidate i'm not saying it's wrong we just say i want to reconfirm or revalidate this assumption that's it and what about this this one is very important read very carefully guys the net cash flows do not include any of the government grants which may be obtained for the renovation work what is does this sound right the cash flow do not include government grants it does it sound right to you as a cfo i, I would always ask this question why the grant is not included i mean there could be there could be a reason i don't know but i'm supposed to ask that right yes so i would just say and i think from a logical perspective it should be included because a cash flow is a cash flow inflow and outflow so if we are receiving government grant as a you know cash or funds it should be taken. It is one of the main attraction, one of the main advantages that, you know, there's the government is offering grants. So why the F you have not included the grant in your calculations? This needs to be revalidated. And obviously, if you include that, it will further improve the NPV, right? very good yes amal you are right maybe there are certain conditions but that's not our job as cfo my job is to ask questions Halas. it is the job of you to uh, you know answer back whether there are any conditions attached or not got it so right now okay so let me just draft this very quickly i know you guys are tired 
but you know i want to take it slowly so that you understand the foundation so where is the word processor i would say now this is the issue of this one huh? the why is it bold okay the inflows does not include government grants this is a major attraction of hotel option as it would reduce the renovation costs this amount should be included in the cash flows in order to give a correct picture enough basic and then what is this the cash inflows are based on 65 percent occupancy in year two year three and year four rising to 85 percent in year five year six and year seven does this make sense that for year one year one is the construction year okay so year one is the construction year, like nine months construction. So year two will be the first year of revenues. So how can be the revenue be constant for year two, three, and four? As a CFO, doesn't it click to you that what is going on? And why 65% from day one? How can you get 65% occupancy from day one? What is the basis of 65? Why not? 55 or 75 for that matter. This is a very, very important assumption because it is directly affecting the cash inflows in your projection, which will again in turn affect your ultimate NPV. So you cannot be so casual like this. Very good. Very good. I'm just going through the comments. Yes. Kevin, the change from 65 to 85 is a secondary thing. The first thing is, why 65? Why not 25? The first three years, 65. As, as a common sense, if it's a new hotel, I don't know. It might take some time in built up, right? I mean, I'll just draft very simple stuff. I'm just asking these questions for you guys to understand but when I will draft, I will just make it very good. Also, the occupancy rates of 65% and 85% seems inappropriate as they are constant. What are the basis? of these assumptions. Uh, I would expect a lower occupancy rates in the initial years. This needs to be revalidated. Class. CFO doesn't talk a lot, okay? CFO's job is to always ask the right question and move on. You like it? You like the job of a CFO? Elvin, what you're asking is small questions, like very operational. Think strategic. Why 65? Why not 25, 45? Tajwar, it is a like-to-like -like comparison, okay? Your concept needs to be built. 
because NPV is always based on discount factor, so it is a like-to-like -like comparison. Even though the cash outflows and inflows are different, the NPV of both options are like-to-like -like because that's the way we compare. Will you be sharing this answer? Really? You want me to share this answer? Why? <laughs> Very smart, so that you can copy, eh? Cheater. Okay, $10 extra for sharing the answer. Okay, I, if you want, I can share, no problem. Enough, enough, forget, I'm less just. Let's look at this. I just write two lines. Khalas, don't go into the details. You don't have the time when you are drafting. Imagine just a couple of lines and it's enough for the to show the examiner that you understand how a CFO works. That's it. Please don't get stuck into nitty gritties and this and that. You are a strategic business leader, Baba. Okay, see to the point. Tuck, 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 khalas. Enough. So I'm done with the financials. And lastly, what tax implications? Ah, so do you see any tax implication? Any tax implication? No. So let's let's write one sentence. What can I write? What can I write? Do you understand this simple language? If I am the CFO and if I write this to you, will you understand that? Possible tax implications will need to be included, if any. Do you understand? That's it. I will copy this and I will also put under the financials of this one because this applies to both the scenarios. And what about the last point? sensitivity analysis it is always suggested that a uh, good cfo would ask for multiple scenarios uh, sensitivity analysis just to make sure uh, that everything is covered properly so you can just write one small sentence further uh, sensitivity analysis should be done to identify the sense the most sensitive assumptions affecting the NPV. Alas, you all know what a the sensitivity is. This uh, is an uh, uh, what is a sensitivity analysis? You know that, right? So I'm just impressing the examiner by showing him that I'm a professional. This is how I work, honestly. This checklist is my checklist. Whenever I receive any projections, and I, I, I receive a lot of projections because everything, all decisions are based on projections. So this is my checklist. I just look at all these things and khalas. My, I just share my review points. So these are my review points. Wow, 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 wow. So guys, uh, let me let me show you are you guys okay with this now do you want to see how this looks to the examiner just press this print button you see this print button i will press this print button and it says save as pdf save as pdf and i will save it uh, i'll save it in download 
And I will say maybe. Okay. Where is it? Where did it go? Download. Yeah. So the examiner will see uh, something like this. Do you like it? It says a uh, report. Board of Directors. Nice, huh? Report, Board of Directors. Now, if I will check, I will check like this. I'll show you how an examiner checks. Okay. So, format, report. Okay. Report to, from, subject, date, introduction. Ah, what's missing here? Sincerely, management consultant. Okay. Now, uh, option one is there. Option two is there. Option one, you know, external factors, 1.2.3.4. Point. You remember one point is how many paragraph? One, five point. Okay. S internal factors, six, seven. Financials, one, two, three, four. Very good. Very good. Option two, external factors, very good. Internal, there are two factors. Financial, one, two, three, four. Okay, very good. So this guy has covered a lot of points. Nice. What about um, b -b 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 professional marks? So what was the professional skills? Evaluation. Then I will make sure that have you covered pros and cons? Mm, yeah, I've talked about good things and bad things. Do you think, do you agree good things and bad things? We have covered both of them. Do you think we have scored evaluation by covering everything? Yeah. So very good. So what I will do is, so it was 20 marks technical and four marks for professional. So I think you guys have got uh, given a lot of points. So I would give you 20 for technical, six twos up. I would give you like 13 marks, 13 to 14. Or how many, uh, I like it, like the good points, yeah. So maybe 14, um, 14 from technical out of 20. And, uh, two marks out of four for evaluation or maybe you can want to make it three so how much 14 plus 2 16 divided by 24 go why did i give 14 because you know our points are smaller the kind of points which the examiner expects we will not be able to produce that kind of drafting under exam conditions okay so I think this is good enough mark. So do you get an idea how your papers are marked? They look at the paragraphs. How to score full mark, Vakas? Good question. <laughs> uh, Padam is saying 67%. Very good. How to score beyond 14? My friend, you, you have to consider time management. If English is not your mother tongue, you're not, if you're not a fast reader, forget about full marks or good high marks. Time management is more important. Remember, already we spend so much time. If you want to score more than you require eight hours. So maybe four hour of this attempt and four hour of next attempt is okay. <laughs> you understand? Forget about nitty gritties. Do you understand how the examiner sees the script, how he sees the format, how he counts the points and the number of things, and how he then in the last sees the professional marks? Does this look sexy? Yeah, proper. Like it looks like uh, you can send it to the board of directors. Very good. That's the ultimate product 
which you have to sell to the examiner. How we do the ending, we will just, I will show you how you do the ending. It's very simple. You go to the end and you go to the end and you just write I don't have time, I will just bold it and slightly increase the font so that the examiner can see a proper end. Halas. Mini, you think, I think you missed yesterday's class. Never give conclusion unless specifically asked or required. Guys, how was it? Before I proceed, I need to make sure that you all of you understand how the drafting is done. Mm -hmm. It was slow. Definitely, it will take time for you to build speed. Okay. But first, you need to understand the technique. One line from the scenario, and then you add one line on your own. We need to write less. So if we have gathered a lot of points, I can easily delete them, right? I don't want to mess up my answer or show it like as a Sunday market. I don't want my answer to look like a Sunday market with so many points. Just two, three points nicely explained and done. Now, uh, how much time, what, what time we started? It, we started 7.30, 8, 30, 9, 30, oh God. 37, 30 to 8.39. So, all right, so do you guys need a break? Sir, are the points which that's the most important ones? Not really. So you can include I don't know, it's very subjective, right? It doesn't, it is not necessary that the points with stats will be the most important one. But you may include one point with stats just to show off to the examiner. Yes, Sana, good point. Sana is saying the analysis and recommendation is mostly based on common sense, yes. If time management is no issue, how to score more? Sia, time management is a big issue. I don't want you to, first you do two, three papers, right? If you are enrolling in my mock-based practice classes, <coughs> then let's do two, three papers. If you feel that you're able to complete the paper before time, then I will tell you how to score more. I will not tell you now because then you might go in the wrong direction. There is no syllabus or technical knowledge. Yes, as I said yesterday, 25% of the paper, in fact, a bit more is mostly common sense. All you need to do is just have some basic understanding of the case, basic understanding of business concepts, and you can build up your answer. Always remember the board of directors are five-year-old children. You cannot go complicated with them simple right guys so let's take a break yes Varda. let's take a break so <clears throat> can you see my screen share my screen share my screen come on guys what's happening share my screen Wait, guys, uh, what happened to my pen? We can share. Oops. Uh, 
Um, I don't want this. I want to close this. Yes, my pen is not working, so give me one minute. What's happening? Break, what's the time now? It's 9.23, let's say 10.23, no, 25 to 10.25, 35, 40. Okay, I will see you at 10.40 with question number two. Uh, guys, enjoy your break, but be back on time, okay? Thanks, guys.
Oh, Wakas, Pakistan won. Very good. I didn't knew there was a match today uh, against which team? Oh, Namibia, one of the tough team, huh? <laughs> Good. All right. So, guys, uh, should we start now? If uh, most of you are back. Okay, let's. So now, <clears throat> I'm going to start with day two. So, we were miserably behind schedule for day one. And today, whatever we did was pertaining to yesterday, but I didn't want to rush because this is creating the base and the foundation. So I hope that now we will speed up a bit. I'm now formally starting today's webinar and I think we will not be able to complete it. So that's fine. I will spread it over to tomorrow then. For me, quality is more important than quantity right now. Right, so welcome to the day two of the webinar and uh, that's my introduction for those students. Um, what's important basically is my WhatsApp number and uh, I have my own global SBL WhatsApp group. It's very important that all of you are member of that group and if you're not yet member of that group, please message on this number and you will be added to the global group, okay? How to ask question, you know, it's just chat box today. That's the suggested study plan. Again, this is for people who have joined today that I have published a study plan between now and the exam. So these are the questions which you should do, then three marks. And then uh, I'm also offering my mock based practice class, which will be starting from November 6th. And like today, I, if you like today's pattern, we will be solving like at least four SBL questions like today's pattern. Okay, so really, really helpful. If you want more details, you can message on this number and enroll yourself especially uh, good for reset students, right? And um, back to Nebi. So uh, we have talked about this one. Now, I think today we will cover these two topics, diversifying risks and financing structure. So let me um diversifying risks very very simple topic uh you know risks can be diversified at three levels so whenever you get a con a question relating to diversifying risk just make sure that you give three head these three headings product diversification, industry diversification, and geographical diversification. Product diversification means that you should have a variety of products so that if one product fails, the other might save uh, the day. Similarly, industry diversification means that you should not put all eggs in one industry. Why? Because if that industry declines, you will be screwed. So industry diversification means that you should have business interests in a variety of industries so that if one industry is not doing good, the others can cover up. And thirdly, geographical diversification means that you should not put all eggs in one city or one country. You should diversify geographically, preferably to more countries so that you can take advantage of political things and uh, economic issues. Got it? Very simple. These three headings and you are done. Any questions on product diversification? Simple topic. Yes, Shah. Any questions on 
diversifying risk yes or no everybody i need everybody to participate uh don't raise hands uh, it's okay i mean uh okay now the next topic is financing structure again i will give you a story uh, a high level picture like a cfo so there are two types of financing available to a company it is called financing structure it is also called funding strategies that how would i fund a particular project or a particular option financing structure or funding strategies so what are the two types of funding options available one is called debt based financing or debt financing and the other one is called equity financing debt financing examples could be bank long term loans term finance certificates debentures they are all long term liabilities debt means loan which you have to repay along with some interest or finance cost equity financing means that you raise share capital you raise uh, you know ordinary shares preference shares rights issues ipos i mean you add increase your share capital that's equity based financing so there are two broad uh, things debt financing equity financing which one is better come on which one is better <laughs> depends very smart guys it depends it is not as simple as saying this is better or this is better in real world it all depends on a lot of things what suits the particular organization so we should know the pros and cons of both options so that we can decide based on the case study which one is better for them or let the board decide what my job is i will identify the pros and cons of debt financing versus pros and cons of equity financing and then we will debate in the board and then at the board will take a collective decision yes <laughs> all right so what how do we decide what are the factors when we try to decide so obviously the first thing is purpose and amount so we need to know what is the purpose why do we need this fund and what's the amount the purpose and the amount may affect the decision for example uh the amount if the amount is small it's not a big deal we can go for loans running finance this and that but if the amount is big then i need to think seriously about long term financing options the second thing is duration of the requirement the the funding requirement or a funding gap may be short term or it may be long term it all depends for how long you need the money for so for short term there are running finance options uh overdrafts right i will not raise share capital for to meet short term requirements okay so the duration is also important and then the the main thing equity financing versus debt financing so the first big difference is the cost the cost of equity financing is linked with profitability so if what is the cost of equity financing basically it's dividends right when you take share capital you have to pay dividends and when do you pay dividends when the company makes profit if the company is making losses you don't pay dividends right so the cost of equity financing is linked to business performance so if i earn if i make money i will pay dividend if i don't make money i will not pay dividend this is a big advantage however 
on a debt financing, the cost is fixed. You have to pay a fixed finance charge regardless of your business performance. You understand? Whether the business makes money or loses money, you have to pay. A second big difference is equity financing. It dilutes the existing shareholding because you're adding more shareholders. You're adding more owners. So you're actually reducing your stake in the business. But when you borrow some money as loan, it does not affect the ownership or the culture of the company because the owners culture come from the owners, right? The third difference is no collateral is required. Collateral means some guarantee, some physical lien on the assets. But when you take a loan, the bank will always require some guarantee or tangible assets as collaterals like buildings or you know, stocks or inventories, right? The fourth difference is this one, the shareholder uh, equity financing does not affect your gearing level. But if you take loans, it will affect your gearing level. So these are the basic differences between the two cost perspective, ownership perspective, collateral related aspects, gearing aspects, cultural aspects. So in which option, let me see whether you understand or not. In which option, there's a chance that your business strategies might be challenged or might be disagreed with. Equity, very good. Because no, not in debt financing. Oh my God, equity financing. Because now you're adding more owners. So they might challenge the business strategies because only the owners can talk about business strategies, right? The bank will not get interfere in your business strategies. Very good. Yunus, I'm sorry, my boy. You made a big conceptual mistake by typing debt financing. Right, so you understand how... If someone asks me which one is better, debt financing or equity financing, I will say it depends on the pros and cons and it depends on your situation. And I can tell you the pros and cons and then you decide. So equipped with this, there are two professional skills one is commercial acumen skill and one is skepticism skill. Commercial acumen skill means that you have to show the examiner that you understand business. So as a CFO, you think I need to understand my business? What do you say? As a CFO or as when you are a CFO, is it important that you understand that business like in which you are working, your business, your business model, your products? Why? Why does a CFO needs to understand the business? Because he sits on the board, right? He, has, he gives his input on strategic matters, future strategies, your projections, budgets, all these things. So if I don't understand the business, how would I sit in the board? Yes, I am a consultant to the CEO in numbers. I'm an expert in numbers, right? But I have to understand. Now there's a big difference in understanding accounting and understanding business. You guys may, be, may understand accounting better than me, but I understand business better than you because now my role is more into business. So we all agree that sooner or later, the CFO, you will become a CFO, hence you must have commercial acumen skill. And that's what the examiner wants to see in you at this stage that you understand business. And it is not rocket science. 
you just copy paste information you already know this you know the commercial acumen you do commercial acumen because your all your answers are from the exhibits right so automatically if you follow the exhibits by default you are doing commercial acumen just don't talk like an accountant just don't use technical accounting words like deferred taxation ifrs do not start with financial points first always start with non financial or strategic points first and then add financials towards the end got it did you see that in 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 this answer you see in the first answer i started with external factors which is non financial then i talked about internal factors which is non financial and then in the last i came to financials that's the right sequence the board they talk more about strategies the non financial strategic stuff first and then the financials will follow so just you know keep this in mind it always starts with non financial or strategic points first in your answer and financial should be towards the end of your answer okay very simple skepticism skill is my the most difficult skill from an exam point of view okay it's difficult it's easy to understand but many students they make mistake in skepticism skill so what is skepticism skill yeah having a questioning mind so what you know if every weekend imagine uh, every weekend i sit late in my office and i reach home uh, after midnight every weekend what do you think my wife will do will she ask me any question will she one weekend i can understand but every weekend if i am coming at midnight she will have some doubts and then she will question me she will investigate she will challenge me further investigate it yes and supposing if i have some nice female smell perfume smell coming from my jacket i'm dead right okay skepticism skill means having a questioning mind now as a cfo <coughs> should you have a skepticism mind because a lot of people will try to make fool out of you right so you have to have that auditing mind a uh, smartness to challenge to check stuff to counter question you should have the balls to disagree with something which is not right that's a main skill which a cfo should have skepticism but in an exam point of view all you need to do is ask couple of questions in your answer so your drafting will be in a questioning style or a questioning tone of drafting if you ask one or two questions you will get this mark and if you can't ask questions you can also say i i disagree or it is incorrect or it's inappropriate so just challenge use these kind of words and you will be safe sana is saying but sir shouldn't the consultant have a positive tone instead of an aggressive one aggressive one i never said aggressive Aggr I, i i cannot be aggressive you forget about consultant even as a cfo i never use this word aggressive aggressive is something else skepticism is something else so what but i understand what you're trying to ask yes you are right as a consultant you want to sound positive but if the question says demonstrate skepticism skills then you will need to tweak little bit in your drafting without getting rough 
or harsh. Okay. I disagree sounds aggressive. Maybe it depends. Uh, I beg to disagree. Unfortunately, I cannot agree. I don't know. Don't get stuck into the exact wording, but do you understand the concept? Elvin, just one or two. I'm just giving examples. All right. So let's do the question and you will understand. Now, what is the question? Where is the question? Here is the question, right? So the first one is just prepare briefing notes. So the format required is briefing notes for the board of Navy. Okay. A, an explanation of the appro appropriateness to Navy company of diversifying risk by going into hotel business. Six marks. And professional skills are available for demonstrating skepticism skills in questioning the appropriateness of diversification for Navy two marks. How many marks in total? Eight marks. Now, how many points for eight marks? Very good. Can I say four points? Or maybe four paras? Questioning the diversification, that's diversifying risk by going into hotel business. B, consideration of the key factors which will influence the financing structure the board of Nebi might choose, the financing structure. How would they finance the thing, right? Professional marks for demonstrating commercial. Like, actually, you know what? I should have been reading not from here, but from here so that I can, you know, look at any additional thing. Okay, I think we, we are safe. Do you understand that? Uh, second point is financing structure how many marks 10 marks i need to give five points or five paras okay why do you say four to five exact four okay right so let's go i think yesterday when we were solving this um when we were solving this we found something uh we copy pasted right 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 did you see this yeah so when we were reading uh yesterday uh we found these wordings from the exhibit the sons have suggested that maybe should pursue a strategy of product diversification and enter the hotel industry. Mm -hmm. The market condition are suggesting that maybe it is now time to diversify our portfolio. Mm. So first of all, we can start by saying, and I need to cover these three things, right? Product diversification, industry diversification, geographical diversification. Are they diversified right now or are they all eggs in one basket? What do you think at the moment? Are they diversified? Yes, no. One basket. Okay. Very good. But before I start drafting, should we make the format? What was the format? Briefing notes. And this briefing note covers both part A and part B. 
Okay, so let's quickly make a format caps B R I E F I N G briefing notes to uh, board of directors from management consultant subject date is 7 december 2021 this briefing notes okay uh, subject what do you plot the subject can I pick up diversifying risk as one? And for part B, we can say financing structure. Okay. You will say uh, class. There are two parts, part A, part B. So I just picked up the keywords from both the requirements. Diversifying risks and financing structure and then how will you do an opening sentence this briefing notes and then i can um you know uh, copy paste uh, from here this briefing notes i can just copy paste from here uh, this briefing notes explains no, no caps. Explains the appropriateness of diversifying risk by going into hotel business. And what else? There's a part B. Consideration of this control C. And here control V. And key factors which will influence the financing structure the board or uh, board might choose done opening sentence is there let me beautify all this is bold i increase the font size to heading three and this one i want larger and center and underline Looks good. Briefing notes. Very sexy. Very good. Now, now the heading is part A. What is part A? Diversifying. So, you know, I'm just giving uh, so that the examiner can see part A and part B both answers very clearly. Hmm? Okay. Okay, done. Now I can, I would, how do you want me to start this? Uh, should I first talk about their existing and then we will talk about the diversification of hotel industry? What do you say? I need four points. I need four points. So I've got three broad headings. One hour. Mm -hmm. We will say that, you know, currently, how do you want, do you know, currently, Nabi has eight restaurants in Caputo. This shows that Nebi has not followed any diversification strategy to date. Do you think this sentence is correct? Done. So what's wrong in not having any diversification strategy? When I'm saying they have not followed, that's good or bad? It's bad, right? So what can go wrong? 
in impact risk is high yes all balls in all balls in one basket this is inappropriate you remember this word inappropriate this is inappropriate from a risk management point of view as all stakes are in one basket enough one paragraph or one point completed and you see i deliberately use the word this is inappropriate because which skill is required skepticism i have to challenge i have to disagree i have to tell them guys this is not right so what if i am a consultant it is my job to tell them this is not right if it's not right i i have to tell them right that's skepticism yes now i will skip all this garbage and i will directly go to product diversification so in this case what is their existing product restaurants and now they are going into hotel so is that a product or an industry diversification i think of going from restaurant to hotel is more in industry diversification right so product diversification i don't think so product diversification would mean that instead of fine dining you offer some fast foods or deliveries or i don't know uh, cooked or packed food soft drinks juice corners french fries that's product right so hotel industry diversification is not a product diversification it is more on a industry diversification right uh hanima you are uh, i mean it's subjective so i don't know i mean up to you so you can't put in both right i know i know but it's i don't think it's a product diversification uh, it is an industry diversification anyway so i will say that product Okay, I just defined something. Like what is means? In case Nabi diversifies into hotel business, I don't think. Why did I write? I don't think. Shh. why do i think why did i write i don't think why this wording skepticism yes i don't think that it is a product diver cipher c fication as restaurants will still be part of the hotel done enough industry diversification yes we will say that diversifying into hotel industry seems like a diversification as it is a it is different from restaurant is this a is this a related diversification or unrelated 
रिलेटेड मीन्स के इट इज डिफरेंट बट इट इज लाइक सम सिमिलरिटीज आर देयर रिलेटेड राइट डिफरेंट हाउ एवर इट इज अ रिलेटेड डाइवर्सिफिकेशन so what's what's wrong with related so if the hotel business goes down what happens to the restaurants inside the hotel all it will affect the restaurant so if i say if you see the one of the articles it said that hospitality industry as a whole so hospitality includes hotels and restaurants so if the entire hospitality industry goes down do you really think it is a real diversification of industry so yes it is something better than nothing right i mean you can say that yeah it is a diversification however it is a related diversification which means that both restaurants and hotels are part of so what's wrong in that now i want to use some negative tone do you agree does it make sense to you why am i saying this this is not appropriate i'm challenging it i'm saying fine you are diversifying it's good but or whenever you use the word however it means that now you will talk something bad some disadvantage something opposite i'm deliberately using the word however but this that because of skepticism you see i have changed my drafting i'm acknowledging they are diversifying but then i'm also saying that it may not be enough what about geographical diversification Do you agree with this? At the moment, all restaurants are in Kapoto. The hotel option will help in geographical diversification to northern part of the sea land, where growth potential is higher than southern part. Agreed? But now, can I try and put some question mark or some identify still some negative point? like covid okay padam is saying like covid 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 so you think covid will affect both south and north yes so what happens if the overall economy goes down so the economy is always of the country right so even if it's south of the country or if it's not of the country if something goes wrong at a country level it will affect all the businesses right so economy economy risks political risks social so all the you know bigger factors 
which impacts at the macro level. So when we say geographical diversification, the best form of geographical would be country diversification, right? So that if there's a war or if one country is uh, in a political uh, turmoil, you can cover or exchange rates. I don't know. So we will say that although, so I started with the positive point, I would say that it will definitely help in geographical because you are right now everything in Caputo. However, Nebi is still operating in one country, hence macro factors such as political risks, economic downturns will affect all part of the country. Alas. More general? What do you mean more general, Alvin? Where am I general? Alvin, can you explain what makes you think that we are very general here? I started with saying that oh, everything is in Caputo. That's not general. And then I'm saying that you are going to the not part. And then if the if the overall something happens, it will affect both north and south. It's not general. Obviously, the impact would be general to start after a certain extent. When you explain your point, you have to be general. But when as soon as you link with the case and you say eight restaurants, Caputo, North Park, it's not general. Okay, Alvin. This is what you need to do. So simple and to the point. Please do not complicate your answers. You want to see how this looks? Here, you see this? Briefing note, da 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 da, part A, product diversification, industry diversification, geographical diversification. Did we uh, focus on professional skills, which is skepticism? Yes, somewhere I asked questions, somewhere I said it's not appropriate, it's not enough. So I, you know, I did adopt a deliberately negative tone enough. You think this is a short answer? No, it is just eight marks, so four points. Opening this one is, so this point, the current situation is, will be considered as one point. And then here, and here, and here, four points enough for eight marks. Do we have to delete the questions once done answering? Um, up to you, uh, not necessarily, examiner is okay. Can we not include the point about becoming a worldwide member? So becoming a member of a group, how will that diversify geographically? Just by becoming a member of a global group, how would that geographically diversify you? I don't understand, okay? Right, guys. Uh, How much stamina you have? 
can we do my more one hour more or like 15 20 minutes is okay 10 percent is left 30 minutes one hour really so let's do the part b of the financing structure and then we will 15 20 minutes huh okay so i think the time is up the the, the scheduled time is up or not oh god Okay, then let's not do a lot of overrun, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Let me just tell my wife to start cooking dinner. Yes, Vakas, if you, you can use FAO as well, huh? no problem. Uh, why am I not able to get rid of the screen? Ah, here. All right, all right, all right. Now, uh, where is the part B? Consideration of the key factors which will influence the financing structure the board of NABI might choose. 8 marks plus 2, 10 marks. I need to talk about 5 points. Elizabeth, uh, okay, I'm sorry. I think I missed your question. So you can ask me now. I will wait. Elizabeth is a bit upset because she thinks, she feels I am not answering her question. So please, I'm waiting for Elizabeth. Please quickly type or copy paste your question and I will answer. Okay, for briefing note, should we have sincerely management consultant? Yes, please. What else? How many lines should be suitable? I discussed all these points yesterday, my dear. I don't know when you guys attend or you guys are not attending. There is no concept of how many lines, but generally I think three lines, three lines, four lines is enough. It's very subjective. It all depends on, you know, the screen and, but two, three, four lines is enough. I don't like big paragraphs, okay? Yes, it is, but so I just, uh, you know, please tomorrow watch day one webinar so that you can come up to speed, all right? Again, Saki, please ask, don't ask questions which are not relevant to the current discussion. I cannot answer individual questions which is not pertaining to the you know the topic under discussion. I hope you understand. All right, so let's go for part B. So part B is this one. Mohammad Anas is asking, like this printer view option, is there any live exam platform? Yes. In your CB platform, you just print the uh, press the print button and you will see the PTF version. Same like what I did, you can also do. Saki, I will hold this question for later on. Huh? I will answer it, but not now. Now, consideration of the key factors. And what is the... And we've got this point. So what have we gathered? You already have some points um, from the this thing, right? from the case. So let me read the point. So it says a venture capitalist will be committed to our success in a way that bank is not. So why would be, why would a venture capitalist be more committed as compared to a bank? Any idea? Why do you think the bank will not be that committed to our business strategies? Ah, very good, because venture capitalist has a stake in the company. 
Subha is asking why there are only three points in part A. There are no three points. There are four points. Even the existing scenario, which I explained, will be considered as a point. Maximum you need to give is four points for eight marks. Because a venture capitalist is interested in the business because they are stakeholders, not stakeholders, but shareholders. A bank will get the same amount of interest on our loan, regardless of how well we are doing. Yes, absolutely. Whereas a venture capitalist, uh, you know, will just get dividends or returns once we start making profits. The current terms with our bank stipulate that our gearing ratio does not reach 45% and that we remain solvent. Okay, so if we take more loan, our gearing will deteriorate further. A venture capitalist return, on the other hand, grows in proportion to how successful we become. So in signing away some measure of control in the form of shares, we also gain a powerful ally to help realize our plans. We do not have the appetite or the capacity as a family to do this alone. Okay, I will pick up sentences. So, um, I will give the heading. Is it? Uh, yeah. Now, what factors? So I would say um, purpose and amount so following. I can copy from your following are the key factors which will influence the financing structure. Control C. Following are the key factors which will influence the financing structure, purpose and amount. That's number one. Even if you want, you can number the points. Where is numbering here? Purpose and amount. What is the purpose of this financing? What's the amount involved? Is that clear? Any issues? Straightforward, I just reproduced my facts, which I know so far. Okay. And uh, oh, Baba, why are you giving me trouble? Oh, forget the numbering. Second heading is uh, duration. What do you think the duration would be, short term or long term? The duration of the requirement will affect the sources of funding. In your case, why did you why did I write in your case? Can anybody tell me? Why did I write in your case? Because remember, I'm a consultant. This is part of a briefing note. Okay, always, you know, these little things are communication skills. In your case, uh, the funding will be required short term or long term? Long term, as it as it is to finance future strategic options. Alas. Now the third one, cost. What do you think? The 
there was something cost here, yeah. Just copy paste it. A bank, a debt, a, a loan from bank will get the same amount of interest regardless of our business performance. Whereas a venture capitalist uh return grows in proportion okay i'll just when the venture capitalist return will grow as we make profits as we make profits alas is that okay what about cost of financing done what about ownership? Simple, as you see how simple I'm just giving two liners. Yes, I'm coming, I'm coming to gearing, good point. Gearing. Depends on How much more than 45%, right? It was somewhere here. So the bank is saying that they will not provide more loan if the gearing crosses 45%, correct? Can anybody tell me? What is the current gearing level of Nebi? Nil. Okay, Aisha, good try. Wait, something is, my screen is gone. Uh, what's happening? Oh God, I messed up with my screen. Okay, 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 Baba, okay, okay, okay. Function F11, what's happening? Wait a second, guys. You know, these kind of things, they happen in a CB situation. Why I am not able to move, okay. Oh God, oh, you see how stupid. Now, if you look at the, the annexures, what about this annexure? 
it says accounting info year ended march aha so they've given you a statement of profit and loss account and they have given you a statement of financial position so would you guys be able to calculate gearing for me i don't know how to calculate gearing so i believe it's net assets which is like 1233 3, divide by net assets plus long term liability so can anybody calculate gearing based on the financials 86 no that's not right 35 that's ramsha is correct 46.3% excellent excellent that's correct so it's basically debt divided by debt plus equity right 46% is correct smart people so now you see i knew that there is a financial statement given so immediately i would like to calculate the gearing because the board will ask you okay what is our current gearing so as a cfo you must know the current gearing and because the financials have been given i am expected in the exam at the moment our existing gearing is this is a big one huh? they cannot with this already they have breached their what else maybe you can talk about culture very good enough expensive car point what are you saying ali you think the expensive car point will affect whether we take loan or we take debt financing enough i think for 8 marks we are supposed 10 marks we are supposed to give 5 points right if you are getting small if you are giving small small points then 6 points more than enough you can also talk about i think that's that's great ownership and control i talked about ownership and control right here ownership you can see that did we pick up information from this paragraph i think most of the information we have picked from here which shows that we have linked with the case uh 
uh, yes, Ali, you're right, but I don't like lengthy answers. And please, your time management is very important. If it is taking me 15 minutes to type, it will take you 30 minutes to type. Understand that. So please write less. Just link with the case and one liner explaining your point. Adrian is asking, did we use enough commercial terms to demonstrate uh, commercial acumen? Commercial acumen, you don't have to use the words. All you need to do is don't sound like an accountant. For example, when I talk about ownership, when I talk about culture, these are business points, right? Yes, gearing is financial, but it's an important thing. It's a commercial thing. But ownership and control, culture, this does, does it show that I have an understanding of the business, this thing? Or does it show that I'm just an accountant? I don't understand stuff like control, culture, strategies. So you don't have you you just have to demonstrate to the examiner that you understand business and through this i have understood the i have explained sir i think the points are short yes the points are short but for me the time management is important if you are able to complete this paper before 4 hours then you can add more points but if you tell me that I want to write more and in the end you missed 15 marks because of time limitation, then you will never pass this paper. Okay, Pranjna. And it is these points are not short. Alvin is saying, uh, sir, nothing extra needs to be done for commercial acumen. No. If you remember my like yesterday's set uh, class, there are five professional skills. For four of them, nothing extra needs to be done. For evaluation, just pros and cons. For analysis, just identify the root causes. For communication, just focus on the format and the tone and you know third party consultant language. For uh, uh, commercial acumen, just talk about from the exhibit. Don't think like an accountant focus more on non-financials and then financials nothing extra needs to be done stick with the exhibit and you will be fine only for skepticism you have to deliberately change your way of drafting you have to adopt a negative a question mark way of drafting and someone was saying this is very short how do you know it's short you think it's short i will show you it's not short now see is it short it's so many lines you think it's short <laughs> it's all you have to balance the length understand you have to balance the length and the time it's not easy it's a chicken and egg situation if you write more you will lose time if you write less, then of course the quality will go down. So it is you who will decide what is your speed. It varies from person to person. So you have to decide what is your speed so that you know how much to write. And how will you know that? By doing more practice. Okay. The more questions you will solve. For example, you need to solve this question on your own and then you can judge whether you are able to complete on time yes we need to write sincerely in the end of course because it's a format if, if you don't write it's not a big deal but if you write it will create a positive image So look at this answer. How does it look on a PDF? Briefing notes, part A, and then this is part B. It's very good. 
I mean, if you want, you can add one one lines. I mean, I'm not stopping you. You can add one one line more. But right now, understand the approach. Any question, guys? Did you learn today how to draft? Yes, Alamgir, I remove the first paragraph. Guys, you enjoyed, you understood the technique. Yes, I will share this note, but not today. Once we complete, you want this today or once we complete it? After three days. Today, you want today? <laughs> Okay, I can send it today, like question number, this is question number one and question number two, right? And then tomorrow we will add on to this. I can again share it tomorrow. Whatever you guys say. Okay, I will share. There's no harm in sharing today. Right, guys, but what I request, now listen, two more minutes. What I request, please, you have to open your own CBE. And you have to do all this with your own hand. Seeing this on my screen, it's pretty easy. But when you will actually start doing it on your own, you will feel that it's not that easy. It is easy, but you need to have hands-on practice. Because whatever I'm saying, like the points are not difficult, but how you lay them out, how you draft, how you don't get overboard. This only will come through hands-on practice. So please, tomorrow morning, afternoon, spend two hours and do this on the CVE so that when we connect tomorrow evening, you are ready with question number three. Okay? So please do this. Huh? Don't waste this opportunity. So guys, thank you so much. The recording will be available for this class by tomorrow evening before the webinar starts. I will share this answer uh, in few minutes and see you tomorrow with your own CB, right? Great, thank you very much. I enjoyed and I hope you enjoyed and you guys take care. Good night, bye-bye.